your, your work with Avatar at the moment seems to be much more kind of free reign than a lot of people seem to get in a lot of yeah I mean I, I have the space there to essentially do anything I want um, how did that come about? because um, I, I think they used they to they contacted me I, I, probably after I came off Hellblazer actually they contacted mm. me and basically said come to Avatar we'll let you do whatever you want mm. um, it's not a very interesting story well, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say they, to me in my head, I always thought of Avatar as that company who produced uh, basically pornographic violence books, like, uh, yeah. and then now they're the Warren Ellis company, which I'm not sure there's a massive difference, but it's, uh, it's, it's much more easy to say, well, we, the Warren Ellis company. It, yeah, I mean, now Alan Moore works there, but of course Alan Moore does fish porn there. Uh, <laughs> you're referring to um, Neonomicon. Yes, right? yeah. yes, or... As I said earlier, we tend to refer to it as fish rape comic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is doing quite well. Um, Actually, a friend of mine calls it neo nom 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, It's quite interesting because they're, like they're not one of the big two or three, and yet they put out stuff by yourself, Gareth Ennis, Alan Moore, mm -hmm. and it's really high quality stuff, and it yeah. almost it seems to go under the radar a little bit. A little bit. Um, we do better in collections. Yeah. It's um, like oh, yeah, Freak Angels. I mean, we sell a lot of those. Mm. Um, the good thing you brought up Freak Angels. Um, you're quite well known for your internet presence. And anyone here read Freak Angels? The yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just talking about writing for different forums like that. You don't necessarily have discrete chapters. I mean, what's the difference? Like, do you write Freak Angels like open ended or? Um, it's actually ending on episode 144. Nice number. Um, I think it's what, yeah, 144. <coughs> but for the most of it's run, it was written open ended. Um, I didn't want any strictures on it at all. Okay. I wanted the story to just roam where it was going to roam. Okay. Um, and my attitude was. Well, if people really need a plot twist or a plot beat every six pages and they need very tight plotting, they need this and this, well, fuck them, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not charging you, so what are you going to complain about, really? Absolutely. And that just freed me up to just do it any way I wanted, just to open up the pacing and just let the story go at its own speed. Do you think it's different writing for the internet? Because I read an art, something you wrote a while back about burst culture, how people want, like, little... You, I supposedly want like little 10, 50 minute bursts, but you counter this by saying, how the fuck does Neil Stevenson still sell books that are basically the size of an anvil? Yes, um, yes, I mean, you can stack up three Neil Stevenson books and you know, that's, that's bigger than the first flat I lived in. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do, you, do you find it different than writing for like an internet audience? Um, I think if each episode of Freak Angels was longer than six pages, mm. we wouldn't do as well as we do. No, that's a pretty good point, yeah. I, th I think people come to the internet for short bursts of things. Mm. Um, that's not disallowing things like Instapaper and that functionality, um, but that's pretty much relegated to you know, long bus rides. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most people um, are using the internet from work. True or at college, or at home between doing other things. So, uh, yeah, I think short bursts. I mean, that doesn't disallow the fact that, you know, it's a rainy Sunday. Mm. I've just found Freak Angels, I'll read all 100 episodes or whatever it was, I get a lot of those every week. Which I did at work, actually. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> um, but, but in general. How do you think that, like, a lot of talk about uh, digital as uh, a medium for comics, that like, uh, people are going to be moving towards that, I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, it's a mess right now. Yeah. Um, it's so much of a mess that I don't know how much I want to get involved with beyond doing webcomics. Mm. Um, because the whole nightmare of readers in browsers and readers specifically for Chrome and iPhone apps and in-app purchases and popping up Safari and I'm boring myself just listing all these <laughs> and I'm only halfway through. It's not settled down, and while that's interesting to watch, it's not necessarily something I'd want to gamble my time participating in right now. Yeah. And the simple fact is the webcomics aren't broken. 
Absolutely not. I mean, uh, for me anyway, it's, as you said, something people do at work. First thing in the morning when I'm having my Red Bull at work Whoa. is I look up, I don't know, questionable content or Dr. McNinja, just something nice sure. and light and just, you know, that's what it's for. Yeah. It did, like, I like going to a comic shop, uh, to his comic shop, on a Thursday, it used to be a Thursday, now it's Wednesday, and picking up some fucking things, mm. you know, and that yeah. hasn't changed for me. Yeah, but you know, web comics aren't broken, and if you've got a smartphone and it's got apps, that's great, but it's also got a fucking web browser. <laughs> <laughs> um, people tend to forget that. I can't read this, it's not an app. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you can, actually. <laughs> um, you can read Freak Angels on pretty much anything that can get to the web. Hmm. And for me, that trumps apps and specialised readers and walled gardens and the rest of it. I'm pretty sure I can get a my phone. My phone doesn't have a number eight. <laughs> <laughs> or a screen. I was, I was gonna, I'm, I'm looking for the rubber band, actually. So. That's, that's a screen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> are you from fucking Finland? Look at that. <laughs> uh, which is where Nokia is made of, not the so, yeah. Everyone in Helsinki, no one has a new phone in Helsinki. Yeah. It's the home of Nokia, and no one has got a phone that is like less than four years old. It's no wonder Nokia are in such trouble when the no Nokia can't even get the Finns to buy new Nokia phones. <laughs> um, okay, as I said earlier, people want to hear about Transmet, but the other work I suppose you're most associated with, and not so much, I don't think, trying to escape as much as Transmet, but it would be planetary. Oh no, I'd like to forget all <laughs> Why? Um, Planetary is a book that I just associate with various periods of illness. My father being ill for a long time, my father dying, this disaster, that disaster. Um, having to talk DC at a firing John at one point. Really? All kinds of uh, fucked up stuff that I'm not really going to get into with that thing running. <laughs> uh, I think we can all agree that Planetary is pretty fucking awesome though, right? Yeah. Yeah.